Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And if you just logged into the game today, you will have been met by the British Challenge. That's right, another marathon is upon us after the successful Italian Challenge back in April. This time, it is the British Challenge, where you can get your hands on the Carnarvon Action 10, the first ever Tier 8 Premium British Heavy Tank. And the best thing about these challenges is you can get your hands on this tank for completely free. If... You have a lot of time on your hands and I stress that. Today's video is going to let you know pretty much everything there is to know about the challenge and importantly let you know how long it is likely to take you to complete each of the stages uh, depending on how you want to try and progress through it. So for those of you who took part in the Italian challenge the British challenge is pretty much identical albeit with a few key changes. Number one Wargaming have downscaled the amount of experience that you have to grind through at the latter stages. There are also a couple of missions which have been changed out for example this used to be be a blocking mission now it is just deal 4500 damage now for those of you out there who have absolutely no idea about the challenges and want to be explained about it well there are two different ways to progress there's a way which will take you less time in your tier 10 tanks and a way that you can play from tier 6 to tier 10 and just grind through base experience now the stages get progressively more rewarding but also much, much harder. And I believe there are going to be three different ways that you can get your hands on the Carnarvon Action 10. There are going to be the players out there who just absolutely, utterly don't want to have to do any work and just want to pay for it instead. Well, if you have 53 pounds or 60 euros, you can skip all of the grinding and get your hands on it right away. Alternatively, there'll be some players out there who have maybe got a little bit of time and a little bit of money. Well, if you complete all of the different stages, you get that times by 10 percent of a discount off the Carnarvon Action 10. So for example if you complete the first four stages you get a 40 percent discount. If you complete the first eight stages then you get an 80 percent discount off the Carnarvon Action 10. Now to put that into perspective if you complete five then you're going to be able to get a 60 euro package for 30 euros. But one of the best things is you're not just getting the tank you also get all of the extra features as well that you would have unlocked by grinding through the stages. And so this makes the Carnarvon Action 10 a real good opportunity for an active player to be able to pick up a full-blooded tier 8 premium that makes a lot of credits for quite a heavy discount. But of course none of this means anything if you don't know how long it's going to take you and don't worry Quacky Baby's got your back with an excel spreadsheet of doom. Okay let me try and break this down for you. Firstly over on the left we have how you would be able to get through if you play your tier 10 tanks. Then we've got the grind section here. This is how long it will take me to do the grind. And then this part is how long it will take uh, a player who gets 500 average experience in their games to get through the grind. And then we're going to talk about how long it will take the, even the, the most botty of bot players in World of Tanks to get through this challenge, if it is even possible. So firstly, I want to talk about the rewards. I've broken them all down here for you and I've converted everything into a sale price of credits so you can get a real idea rather than just flashy premium consumer Okay, stage one, 30,000 credits. Stage two, 100,000 credits and 10 hours of 200% crew boost. Stage three, 100,000 credits and 10 hours of 300% free experience. By the way, those free experience boosters are fantastic to use during three or five times experience events where you're just trying to, to grind out those wins to get those five times bonuses because it actually stacks and that's a fantastic way to get a lot of free experience without having to use gold. If you complete stage four, it'll be 700,000 credits and a day of premium. That's the equivalent of all of the equipment that you would put on your Carnarvon Action 10. All right. Then stage five, 250,000 and 20 hours of 50% extra experience. Eh, not really too good, but this is the doozy here. Right. Stage six, 20 hours of plus 50% credits. I estimate that that's probably going to give between about 2 to 10 million credits extra, depending on if you're going to be running a premium account and running a tier 8 premium tank at the time. All right, at stage 7, you actually get a special camo. And it looks like it says Action 10 on the side. So you, I guess you could put that on your badger, as we can see here. But how good would that look on the Centurion Action 10, right? Stage 8 rewards half a million credits and also a day of premium, 20 hours of 50% experience, and 20 hours of 50% credits as well. Again, that is worth a lot of credits. Stage 9 as well, and the Carnarvon Action 10 at stage 10 with this time and this is new to this challenge this wasn't in the italian challenge uh brothers in arms as a zero skill crew 
Now that is absolutely fantastic if you want to accelerate your crew training and also kind of overtake any crews you might have had previously on your British tanks because effectively Brothers in Arms is completely for free which makes it way easier to get up into the high five skills, six skills or even seven skill crews which is practically impossible without a, a premium brothers in arms crew. All right, so now you know what the rewards are, how long is it going to take you to get them? Well, firstly, I'm going to do it for me, and I'm not, well, I'm not the best World of Tanks player in the world. I think I know a thing or two about the game. And so I've estimated how long it's going to take me to do each of the missions, both for if I want to play my tier 10 tanks only, and my tier six to 10 tanks only. Now, there's a couple of things to clarify here. Firstly, I believe that tier 10 games last longer, and so I think that each tier 10 game will, on average, take seven minutes. Well, I feel that uh, games towards tier 6 especially, they're probably going to be a little bit faster and then are only going to last about five minutes. And so I've taken it, that into account for all of the statistics that you see here on this table. Next, there's also one very important thing that Wargaming have created uh, a bot preventative measure here so that for your base experience to actually count, you have to finish in the top 10 players of experience. And while that's kind of no big deal for me, I feel like I could finish top 10 seven out of eight games. If you're an average player, maybe you're only finishing in the top 10 maybe two out of three games and alternatively if you're a, 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 a practically a bot you're probably going to be finishing in the bottom at least most of the time right and so this substantially decreases the the grind mission for a very good player but also substantially increases it for a poor player. All right, so stage one requires you to get a high caliber medal. I think I can get at least one high caliber in four games, so therefore I think it's going to take me half an hour to smash one out. Alternatively, I think that I can get the 3000 base experience in about 4.28 games, depending on how well I'm playing, which is actually going to take me just over about 20 minutes. And so we can see that it would be better for me to do the 3000 experience rather than maybe risk it at tier 10. But then again, your tier 10 tanks still count towards the grind anyway. And so you could just try and sign up in a tier 10 to get lucky to get that high caliber. And if you miss it, well, at least you're eventually going to get there anyway, right? Next up, block 4,000 damage. Well, I think it's far easier to just grind this one out. It's going to take me on average about eight and a half games compared to the 15 games I estimate that it will take me to block 4,000, even if I'm playing something like a mouse. Top damage five times in tier 10 tanks. I could probably do that in 10 games, but 17 17 games if I want to try and get that 12,000 experience. Now I could go on and on and on here, but in the interest of saving you time, I'm not going to bother. The table is self-explanatory, but I have highlighted the best route for me to go. Green indicates the stage that's going to take me the least time. Yellow indicates where there's practically no difference. And so if you're an exceptionally skilled player, use this as a bit of a cheat sheet and maybe try and target the different tanks at the different stages. All right, all right. So now that's the 1% the unicorns out the way. Let's focus on the average player. Maybe you're getting 500 base experience points on average in all of your games and you're finishing in the top 10 in two thirds of your games. How long is it gonna take you to complete this mission? Well, I've estimated that it's going to require you to play 840 games of World of Tanks in the next two weeks to be able to get the Carnarvon Action 10 completely for free. And I estimate that that will take you 70 hours. All right, that, that's quite a lot. 60 euros, 70 hours, mm, yeah. And unless you actually enjoy the game, totally not worth it. However, alternatively, maybe you don't want to do the latter stages, which takes significantly more time. And you just want to see how cheaply can you get the Carnarvon Action 10 for the least possible time investment? Well, for example, if you want to get a 50% discount and get it for 30 euros, then that's only going to take you just under 19 hours. That's not too bad over a two week period play for about an hour, hour and a half each day. Maybe at the weekends, play for a little bit more. Maybe during the week, don't play at all. You could probably get the, the whole package discounted very heavily. But the key reason why I'm doing this for you is to, to not think that you're going to be able to get the Carnarvon Action 10 completely for free without being realistic about the amount of time that you're going to have to invest. How frustrating would it be for you if you have absolutely no money to spend on this game to get towards the latter stages and then to figure out that you are going to have to play for 12 hours on the final day to be able to just complete the final stage. Yeah, that's not really going to work out, is it? And remember, it doesn't really matter if you complete the first nine stages if you're not willing to put in either the last six euros or the last 12 hours of effort. 
you're not going to be getting the Carnarvon Action 10, the, the unique style, or the Brothers in Arms crew. All right, so my final table here estimates how long it is going to take you, depending on your average experience, to be able to unlock the Carnarvon actually for free. Now, it's going to take somebody who gets 100 average experience, 33 hours a day. Uh, yeah, that, that's not going to work out unless you didn't sleep and somehow had a magic time device that increased the length of the day by nine hours. It's not going to happen. All right, if you get 200 average experience, you're going to have to play for 16 hours a day for a two-week period. Uh-oh. 300, nine hours a day. 400, seven hours a day. 500 base experience, five hours a day. 600 base experience, 3.7 hours a day. And all of the exceptional players of you out there who are really starting to, to nail your base experience points into the, the mid 1000s on average, well, you're getting it down to nearer two. And so there you have it, exactly how much time you are going to have to spend every day to be able to unlock the Carnarvon Action 10 for free, depending on how much average experience you get per battle. Now, as I did last time, I really want to reiterate that this can be a really, really silly thing to undertake. I don't know about you, but for me, when I, I have to do something, I, I don't really enjoy it as much. You could call this the British challenge, but if you're only grinding there to be able to get a Carnarvon Action 10, you might start actually hating the game that you, you enjoy. For example, maybe you'll find towards the, the latter part of the week, next week, towards the end of the challenge, that your friends are going out and you say, oh no, I need that time to be able to grind my tank. And then you have a bad run of games and you start to just go, oh, screw it, and quit the game altogether. I've seen people burn out trying to undertake marathons, not just in World of Tanks, but in many, many games. And then they end up quitting the game altogether, and they, they've kind of wasted everything that they've put into it. A lot of you will be going back to school, and many of you will be undertaking a new year of university, which just has so many opportunities. If you're in either of those boats, you're clearly going to have to sacrifice a lot of your time and, and possible social opportunities to, to be able to achieve pixels in a video game. Sure, this is a great tank. Sure, it's the first ever tier 8 British Premium Heavy, but it's not really that much better than all of the other premium vehicles in the game. And unlike the the Progetto 46 that I think is very powerful and also had a novel playstyle, this thing doesn't add so many new things. And so I strongly recommend that you be realistic with the amount of time that you have to spend to be able to unlock the different stages and then how much money you will have to spend to be able to top up your time to be able to, to get the tank for free. For example, let's say you're a completely average player and you have two hours a day that you play World of Tanks. Well, I estimate that you're going to be able to complete the first six stages if you play every single day for two hours during that two week period. And if you complete the first six stages, then you get 60% off the price, which means a 36 euro discount, but you're still going to have to pay that 24 euros if you want to get the tank and the special camo and so on and so forth. And so my final suggestion is know how much time you're going to have to spend and know how much money you're going to have to spend at the end, and don't get suckered into wasting either of those important resources. But anyway, ladies and gents, that's about it. I really hope this video was useful for you. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments what stage you are going to try and target. Are you trying to get to 10? Or are you alternatively going to skip on this one altogether and just see if you can work your way maybe towards those 20 hours of 50% credits? And finally, stay tuned to the channel as I will have a full preview of the Carnarvon Action 10 coming this Sunday. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.